A little bit more physicality there as that one's right near the net. And right past Beauchamp. But too bad there wasn't anybody there on the left side for Liberty, or that one may have been in. Jackson Giamato with the long shot, scores! And the Liberty Flames off 2-0 and there go the Teddy Bears. As they hit the ice, the Flames take a 1-0 lead. Yeah, senior Danny Logan gets him on the board. He uh, made his living in front of the net, and it's good to see him bank in that rebound. And as you'll see, the Teddy Bears are flying for the first goal here for the annual third annual Teddy Bear Toss at the La Haye Ice Center. Yeah, the Flames, excellent work. You saw it on the forecheck, really pressing this goaltender and Connor Bochamp. Excellent work by the Flames, because that's the way they're going to be able to score tonight. It's going to be those dirty goals, jamming in front and causing a lot of traffic in front of the net, and then also banging home loose, oh, sorry, loose rebounds. So definitely you want to hang it all out and actually start getting your systems and the proper game plan and mindset going for the national tournament. One of those players you mentioned on the ice right now, right near the puck, as Pinnell blocks it, and that second one goes in. Minot State's going to score really fast. The equalizer there coming from Dylan Johnson, the freshman from Yorkton, Saskatchewan, is going to get the Beavers on the board. And not 20 seconds in, and it will be tied here. Yeah, that 6'3", 245 frame, he, he knew right where to go. He saw where right. Logan scored, and he headed right to the front of the net for a quick response there. Uh, let's see how the Flames respond here. It's uh, Minot's going to leave their top line out and they want to keep it rolling here. Yeah, Bob Pond with a nice shot as you saw on the replay coming from the point and then also Dylan Johnson doing excellent work cleaning up the trash in front of the net. Liberty with 3% more at that as they're going to try to just keep this one out of the net as Minot State's going to try to have a couple guys on the point and just kind of take some shots here. They try to run out this power play, see if they can get something going. There's one there, blocked by Pinnell. Looked to be hit in, and it was, and that will be the second goal for the Beavers. That time comes from alternate captain Cole Olsen as he nets his 12th of the season. And again, they took advantage of the second chance from Pinnell. Yeah, I know Coach Regeer is going to want to make sure his power play is uh, firing on all cylinders heading into Nationals. So he probably just told him to keep it simple and have guys go to the net. And it just looks like a, a shot kind of went through and the guy's crashing and able to cash in a loose puck there behind Pinnell. Is this one out once again? More shots coming from Minot State and that one goes in. And just like that, it will be three to one. Dylan Johnson is second of the night. He's a he's a big presence in front. And, uh, yep. He seems to be, has a knack for that net there. And again, he's found the net twice here in the first period, so he doesn't mind coming to Liberty and playing by the looks of it. Yeah, the Flames definitely got to find a way of weathering this storm as you're starting to see the morale really leave the building. After that first goal for the Flames, really saw the spirit lift up. And you see Jeff Becker right there, not really happy with the play that's happening. And also by the calls by the ref, still screaming at the ref as he skates by. As last year, they were one of the best in the country. This year, unfortunately, it's been real down as it's only effective at 77%. Do you think they're just getting lazier, Pat? What do you think uh, you're going to blame for their struggles this year? Because they have most of the same personnel. As a goal goes in there, personnel for Minot State taking advantage of the power play. And it's going to be 4-1, to 44.9 seconds here in the first period. And it's been all Beavers. Four straight now as the momentum turns. We see a replay on that one. Yeah, take another look. Nice cycling by the uh, Beavers working it around. And Yano, he just comes streaking in. No one's even watching him. Everyone's puck watching, unfortunately. And that's how he's able to sleep through the defense, unguarded and unmatched. And wide open shot. And Pinnell's out of position, unfortunately. An opportunity there. Pinnell hits it up and over. And a man was right in front of him, but he was aware as another one fires off from the point. Who's run on that one? As that one ultimately almost looked like it was going to go in for Minot State. And now another pile up, this time on the other side of the ice. As you saw some early Beaver celebrations there. Yeah, they're, they're calling this a goal here. Uh, All right. It went in, and then he kind of piled up on him. And this this Beavers offense, I mean, there hasn't been a whistle on. You just see a relentless attack. And again, you see the puck yeah, go in. Yeah, it goes right Fryer, past him there. 
pile up ensues. However, they had about four minutes here where they they just been grinding down the flames and then were able to come out with a cycle and a goal there. And I don't even know if they're going to come out of that, but I think that game is going to tear both those teams down to where they're not going to have anything left in the tank come day four. Would that be the, so that be the quarterfinal match potentially Ohio versus Stony Brook? That is correct, and that's a tough. Okay. Here's one here, and the shot there by Hayes goes in, and Liberty is back on the board. The crowd comes alive here early into the third period, and Zachary Hayes, the freshman, able to get it in for the Liberty Flames. Nice breakaway goal there by Hayes. You're not going to catch Beauchamp on the first shot many times, but uh, Hayes was able to bury it there with a nice low shot. No mistake there. Yeah, we talked about Zach Hayes coming in second semester. Really done excellent work, a power forward for this team. Great scoring ability that he has, and he just gets behind the D and right through. Just sneaks it right behind Beauchamp. Missed, played the puck. And now Mr. 22 gets his third of the season. It's not for Teddy Marys anymore. That was just for the first goal. As this one's tracked down by Hughes on the other side of the goal. And now Marnot's going to bring pressure of their own. That one's hit out by Street. And then finally is able to make it over to the man, Zach Hayes. Hayes tries to get it to Wilson. Wilson hits it back. Hayes gets it in once again. He scores. Top shot for Hayes on the right side. And Zachary Hayes trying to bring life to this Liberty Flames team. It's two for him on the evening. Nice shot there. And again, you see guys going to the net, screening the goaltender, Beauchamp there. That's the best way to score on this guy, get traffic and get them shots through. You see a nice play here, a return feed from Wilson. Guys going to the net, and Beauchamp doesn't even move on it. Yeah, it looks like it gets redirected, actually, too, by Grant Garvin in front of the net. But you're not 100% sure, but nevertheless, Zach Hayes, number 22, doing excellent work here in this game. has really come alive here in the third period. When you got a potent offense like this coming in, if you're not on your game for the full 60, it's going to be a tough one. But again, he came in the second and third, and I thought he played a stellar 40 minutes. Insane, though. Yeah, absolutely. He really did, and we touched on it throughout the whole match, like he's been playing excellent well, and he really started finding his groove into this game. As this one's in the books now, the whistle blows, and it is five to three, Minot State, the number one team over Liberty, and we will be back here with some post-game coverage. You're watching the Liberty Flames Sports Network. Don't go away.